Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this week's episode of Tuesday Preppers where we take a look at the in-game news for Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and see what kinds of content we have coming out. Talk a little bit about what kind of uh, equipment you might want to put on your units that are going to help you gear up for these trials, take care of them easily or more easily as the case may be. And, you know, it's, it's Halloween, so of course we have a bunch of Halloween content that we're going to look at, right? There, there's Halloween content here, kind of, maybe. Not really. Let's talk about Clash of Wills instead then. So Clash of Wills is coming. Um, we have the Beast Spirit Reaper Enemy, um, the Dog of Unknown Origin, Dog Spirit of Unknown Origin. Week two, Water, Light, and Dark. We know all this from the bulletins that we've gotten throughout the, the month and the live stream. Now we can see the upgraded sprite. Uh, I'm not a huge fan, um, but there it goes. So um, it has grown spiteful due to negligence from its former master. Eee, someone call PETA. Um, it's the Inugami, um, and it uses water, dark, and non-elemental magic, uh, inflicts confusion paralysis, um, uses attacks that deal fixed damage and fractional damage, um, and also um, we know it does healing reduction to your party as well. Um, they mentioned that in the live stream. Um, and then also a couple things I want to note that you can add water, light, and dark to yourself to fill your morale. Um, and also there's a morale skill that gives water and dark resistance at 100%. So pretty cool. Um, also worth noting um, that the final uh, score is not a number of turns. It is a morale value. So you want to make sure you finish the fight with 180% or better, um, which um, sometimes means a very long clear, but also a very um, intense clear for the last couple turns. Because usually the, for these longer ones, the bosses just get absurd morale generation at the end of the fight, which is really rough. More exciting than that, more exciting than the gear um, that you can craft for like the new upgrades for the, the Celestite Curus um, is going to be stuff like what's in the shop. So they added new units to the shop, Tyvus and Yish, Veritas of the Frost, um, Nickel the Return, and then we're getting some old reruns like Frostblade Fravia, Bulwark and the Melodic Mascots, and Rain and Fina. But more exciting than those um, I think are these abilities, Mystic Acuity and Mystic Tenacity. Um, Acuity is 50% 50 50 attack and magic with killer for beast, human, reaper, and machine. Really, really good. Um, and then Mystic Tenacity is HP, defense, and spirit 50% um, with damage reduction for all four of those races as well. And, and worth noting that both of these abilities could be potentially useful for the upcoming Clash of Wills, right? Beast and Reaper is on both of those lists. So definitely pick these up. If there's two copies, definitely get both copies. Um, and then if you've got anything left over, like pick one of these units, you know, but uh, de definitely get the abilities first. For me personal, um, I will be picking uh, Veritas of the Frost or Tyvus and Yish, but I will not be doing it until the end of the event period for the next three months. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna pick one of those two because I have all the other units already. But not until I get these abilities. These abilities are just too good. Um, especially, you know, tenacity is a, is a rare, unique thing. So grabbing that will be very, very valuable, I think. And we'll talk a little bit about how we can get some 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 killers and some units going for uh, for this piece of content. Um, yeah, good stuff. Clash of Wills. It, uh, ho hopefully more fun than last month. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, but not the only piece of content that we're getting. We're also getting the Crystal Tower Exploration. Um, definitely not Halloween themed, it's Final Fantasy 3 themed, um, and it's an exploration where you're going to be fighting against dragon enemies as well as a human enemy final boss. Um, none of the enemies have any resistances or weaknesses. That's cool, it has three stages, um, and you can get a bunch of cool gear for your Final Fantasy 3 units. Um, also worth noting though, um, that the random fights uh, that you go against do have stone um, like the petrify attacks and instant death attacks. So when you're gearing your units, make sure you gear them for resistance to that in case you can't kill things on the first turn. Also, you can steal the upgrade components, onion seeds, from all the enemies. So make sure you equip your units with abilities that can steal or have like mug learned on um, Diablos. That way you can more efficiently get onion seeds to upgrade all your gear. Um, if you can't kill the enemies for some reason, you could use like smoke bombs and things to run away. Um, that's going to get expensive because this is a farming event and you're going to have to run this event a lot. And you don't really want to run away from things. You want to kill things and get onion seeds. Speaking of how you can do that, it says here you can take Blessing of the Crystals units to get more onion seeds. Um, 
which you know means for people who have these units uh, like Rikt and uh, Ace, um, the new Elena, lots of strong units that are blessing of the crystals. You could potentially just like take care of this really easily. But I believe on the wiki it said that one of the stages was locked to Final Fantasy III. Um, so I'm currently planning on putting an Onion Knight and a Rikt in my friend units. Just make sure that you gear them well for killers um, and make sure they have stone and petrify or stone and death immunity in their uh, their gear. That way, you know, you're helping your friends out. Um, and there you go. As for the killers, so we know we need um, um, human um, and, you know, it's a meme. Human, we talk about human killer every week. So I'm just going to put it on the screen and you can talk about it. You can, you can pause the screen and uh, go hunt down all these human killers. But there's tons and tons of it, right? It's just the most common killer in the game. I'm not worried about it at all. Um, more worried about it is dragons, right? So for, for these are magical dragon killers here. Apollo Harp, Ashura's Rod, Dragon Killer Plus, and the recipe for it, Dragon Eater Sense. And, you know, definitely go after all the dragon killer you can um, to help gear your units. Here's some physical versions. The same ones are all there, but also Dark Lord from Sworn of the Sworn 8, Last Guardian, um, a couple of other things here. You know, but you know, dragon killer is pretty common. I'm not too, too worried about it. Another one that's really common is Beast, right? So Beast, you could get the Beast Killer Plus from Scorn of Aemon. Um, Raphlesia has Beast Eater Sense. Cerberus has Beast Killer Plus. Um, Valued Memories is a huge Beast Killer. So does Vortex of the Past and Hatred, if you happen to have 2B Neo Visions. Or not 2B, A2 Neo Visions. Um, but uh, maybe you don't. Um, but definitely go after Urbans if you don't have that. Um, but speaking of Cerberus, so you can beat Cerberus to get the Beast Killer Plus and the recipe but you can also beat Cerberus to get Fairy Eater Sense. So notice that Cerberus has Fairy Eater Sense right there. Um, that's a big one. So you could go after Cerberus and get both those killers. Um, and then also Spirit Eater Sense and Spirit Killer Plus. Um, lots of things that you could go after for Spirit Killer. It's, it's, it's kind of a rarer one. Um, Spirit and Reaper both. You can get Reaper Killer from Undead, uh, from the Dullahan, um, the Stroper. Scorn of the Ancient Hellbringer. Um, you know, it's a little more common than Spirit, but Spirit and Reaper are definitely the, the two that are the hardest to do. Um, but if you happen to have this item, Soaring Legendary Dragon, um, it's 60% attack and then physical killer for Beast, Fairy, and Reaper. This is gonna become very useful for a lot of um, physical units that you wanna bring to Clash of Wills or physical mages, mages like Ibarra, um, Olive, Nora. These kind of units all really want to have high physical killers and uh, Beast, Fairy, and Reaper all on a single slot, 75% is really, really good. Um, so if you happen to have Flammies, um, this is your time to make them and get their, yeah, their STMRs. I have two of these. I think I have one more Flammy sitting in my inventory that I'll probably turn into another Soaring Legendary Dragon here um, to try and help gear my units. So definitely make sure you grab that because that's going to help you with all three killers that you need. Um, but there you go. So we usually do this for Clash of Wills um, months or weeks where we're going to go over the killers um, and the um, element support units. And so uh, we've been doing this a couple times and I feel like it's sometimes hard to read the chart. And so I made a new chart and we're going to talk about that chart now um, and uh, and take a look. So here we're going to start with the um, the killers. Um, oh, not that one. Hold on. There we go. We're going to start with the killers and then go over the elements. So um, these are all units that can provide you with some beast killer for your party or for themselves. Um, so Samurai Chizuru, White Dragon Lang, Curse of Emmanuel Melissa, Athena Dark Lineage are all um, party buffers. Um, as is Ihana is if she's at EX3 or at EX2, she does a smaller buff for the whole party for every race, which is really good. Um, White Mage Rosa, EX3, the whole party. Eldrin, uh, Cheerful Caroler, Ayaka, Rain and Fina. The various New Vision Rain units all have Beast Killer or Beast Breaker. Um, Re um, Ruin Explorer Nora, Divine Beast Chow does it for himself, Serge does it for the party, Lunar Festival Cleome does it for the party, um, and then also Lara Croft does it for herself. Um, those are the main ones. So there, there are definitely a lot of options for Beast Killer, 
Um, Spirit Killer and Reaper Killer are a little harder. Um, any unit who's wearing Ihana's STMR though can do a Spirit Killer and a Reaper Killer buff, just not in the same turn unless it happens to be Ihana. Uh, Bulwark can do Spirit, Bull, um, Dynast, Scions, King, Dynast, King, Scions, Ash. <laughs> Dynast, Dynast, Kings, Scion, Ash um, can do Spirit Killer. Sakura Dark Lineage can do Spirit Killer. Um, All Bed Girl Riku, Dark Fina Warrior's Prayer, Blue Mage Fina. Um, Tidebringer Kaito can do a big one for the party. Divine Beast Chow again for himself, Ricked for himself, and the, um, the original Ibarra unit can do Spirit Killer as well. Uh, as for Reaper Killer, um, White Dragon Ling again, so Beast and Reaper in the same unit. White Mage Rosa again, um, Songstress Yuna, um, Elegant Temptress Lilith, Stormseeker Esther, Grimlord Sakura, Sonin Sky for herself only, Summoner Yuna for the party. And if you happen to have his gear upgraded to the um, the Reaper Killer version, Black Mage Golbez can also provide a 150 Reaper Killer buff for the party. So lots of choices there. You could potentially see some, some synergy um, units that can do more than one thing. Um, so let's take a look at the water or the um, element supports and see if there's any overlap. Here we go. So now we're looking at elements. So for water, we're talking about Kaito. So Kaito falls into water and spirit killer. Technically, Whimsical Winter Tiana does a water amp. Bacteria does some water support. Shui Yi does some water support. Um, the, the free Addison Ray unit does water support. So does Folka NBA, Lord of the Sea Nicole. Songstress Yuna does Reaper and water. And, and light too, actually. Um, Laguna does water and light and perils and breaks. So does, uh, Lulu does water. Uh, Starlight Elena does water. Um, Avalanche Tifa just does good water damage. Full Moon Carton does water for the party. Um, not very big amped, but it is there. Um, Dragon Lord Bruce just really here for damage. Uh, and Selfie can create a water a water field by summoning Siren. Um, for light, you could bring Sukiko for a light field and some light damage for Clash of Wills. Fiend of the Return does a light amplify field um, and, and party support um, for like amps and stuff like that. White Dragon Ling um, does light damage and amps. So we're talking again, uh, Reaper, Beast, and light support. Three, three, three things in one. Um, Cetra Descendant Aerith does good stat buffs and light support. Um, Summoner Yuna just does damage. Quistus does a field. Lion does breaks. Reagan does breaks. Kuja does breaks. Deuce does support. Um, if you have like A22B and Rick Neo Visions, um, they all do light support for themselves. Um, Vermilion classes Type 0 Ace um, does uh, light support for the party, imbues and imperils. Serge does a field and Corral um, does dark and light imperil and good breaks with the limit burst. So really, really cool. Um, not a ton of damage, but does some damage too. And then as far as dark support goes, specifically dark support, Summoner Unit can provide a field with Anima. Um, go ahead and say that Renoa and Vlad can do fields too, as can Cursebringer and Nelica. Um, I, could, I could spell, right? Uh, why does it, why does it curse? bringer Nelica. <laughs> um, obviously Melissa's the big um, the big dark support. Blade of Vengeance Bar I can do some dark support. War dark Fina Warrior's Prayer. Ellis Sparris does the big imperils. Um, dark Rain some damage. Bulwark can do support for the party um, for spirit uh, and dark. So that's kind of cool. Um, Lilith can do Reaper in dark. World's Hero Gilgamesh can do dark imperils. Black Mage Golbez with his curse armor can do dark imperil. It's pretty good, pretty good imperil. Um, Lynx can do a field. Blades of Black Flame. Reagan can do breaks and imperils. Red Eyed Sage Saul can do breaks and imperils. Full Moon Carton can do some imbues for the party. Malfazy can do that too. And then we've already mentioned Coral. So lots of, you know, dark is definitely the, the most flexible, mo most available good options for dark. Um, some better than others, of course. But that's kind of it. So hopefully you can see some overlap between um, the killers and the element support. Let's talk about the other things we know we need. Um, we know we need magic tank for those water and dark damage. Um, units that can do paralysis or confusion immunity or gear that does that. Um, fixed and fractional damage, mainly talking about mitigations. Um, and then healing reduction. The only thing you can really do to deal with healing reduction is just to heal 
big numbers. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. As far as magic tanks, the ones we came up with that would potentially be useful here, um, Elena, just because she's a tank and a good leader. Abigail, just because she's a really, really good magic tank. Um, the old Chow, Divine Beast Chow, technically has good dark, um, dark resistance and can do some water stuff too. Um, Seymour NVA starts the party off with a big um, dark resistance buff and then is just a free NVA, you know, not the best, not the worst. Um, Dynast King Scion Ash can do some, uh, it has kind of some innate resistances and does some killer buffs. Shoreline Fina and Daisy has uh, innate resistances. Um, and then the Neo Visions Awaken Paladin Cecil. Um, pretty, pretty good magic tank. So lots of options for magic tanks. Some, some provide you with some killers. So hopefully again, you can see some overlap there um, or some other utility. Um, for example, um, Confusion and Paralysis Resistance. Abigail can do Veil, a spell, to give Community and Paralysis Resistance. Or Melissa can do um, Shared Immunity for that, as well as doing Dark Support and Beast Support. Um, Paladin and Sylvie can do the immunities, but not a whole lot else other than stat buffs, and she's not really going to be contributing a whole lot to this fight. But she can do it. You could also just equip your units with gear, like I Love Chocobos, Determined to Fight the Empire, all the various forms of ribbons and other sorts of immunity gear. It's all out there. Lots and lots of stuff. Um, as far as fixed or fractional damage, all you can really do is do mitigations. Um, can't really do anything about fractional. It just is what it is. You have to heal through it. Um, but like Abigail can provide really good mitigations. So can Runda. Lilith and Elena kind of do like, eh. And Melissa can do a little bit of, you know, uh, mitigations, but like not, not super great. Abigail and Runda do the big ones. Um, but you really don't want to bring Runda to this fight because you need a magic tank. So Abigail is kind of like my top pick if I had to. Um, and then as far as healing reduction, just like healing through it, Lilith actually provides a lot of healing with her, some of her skills. Um, Abigail's counter healing, Elena, Melissa can do like Kiraga. Um, you know, you're really kind of like have to just, just boost your spirit and heal through it. Um, and you know, we'll see how we do. Elena can also provide you with a lot of like HP barriers. So does, so does, um, uh, Abigail for that matter. Um, so the, you can, you can kind of get around things a little bit just by having the HP barriers, um, keep you alive a little bit. Um, so just to kind of go over like our contributors to this content tonight, um, you know, so the following users helped us put, compile this list. Um, we also used FFB killers. Um, to look up other killers, um, but Azamar, Syra, Cold, Tsureyu, Dar uh, Tech Black Knot, Sketch, 262, MK Ultra, um, and Jonathan all helped out with um, providing examples of uh, units that might fit into um, these categories um, and help us um, you know, just just keep the community fun. So if you ever want to be a part of one of these uh, part of one of these videos where we go over like the, the in depth stuff you need for Clash of Wills, um, definitely come out on Twitch on Tuesdays. Um, the week, the day before, or the couple days before Clash of Wills opens, and usually we do this together live. Um, so really quick, just gonna throw, give you an example. Um, I don't know that this is gonna work, um, but I'm gonna show you an example of, a, of the team that we kind of threw together um, to potentially cover a lot of a lot of bases here. And these units are not geared, right? I know nothing about what the fight's gonna do um, or anything yet, but here's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, so for a magic tank, I've got Elena. She's also providing our leader skill. You know, you can gear her for whatever she needs um, as far as like uh, her resistance and stuff. Um, but that's kind of where I'm starting is with Elena. Um, but again, I don't know if this is gonna work. We'll see. Um, but we have Elena here. We've got uh, Melissa here for beast killer, um, immunity buffs, um, morale damage buffs, um, and uh, just the various things that she does. She could do dark, uh, also the, the big dark amps for everybody. So that's cool. Um, Rick is here because he buffs his own fairy killer. Um, he also just does really good damage, um, has like morale synergy with Elena. Um, Elena also has morale synergy with Ibarra, who we're gonna get to in a second. Um, he can do breaks and utility and other kind of stuff. And uh, Rick is just here for, for damage. And because I've got him EX3, and darn it, I'm going to use him this time, if I can. Um, Kaito is here for breaks. Um, Kaito is supposed to be getting a lot of buffs um, uh, for, you know, Clash of Wills. Um, I do happen to have Elisparis at EX2. So if, if Kaito doesn't work because I'm doing dark and I 
don't want to do water and Kaito's stuff is all water themed. I could put Ellis Barris in, but doing that, I do lose a spirit killer buff for the party. Kaito is providing a 200% spirit killer buff for the party um, for everybody who doesn't buff their own. So that would mainly be, um, you know, uh, himself. Well, he buffs himself. Obviously, um, that's going to be Lilith and Elena um, because Rick and Ibarra both do their own. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, but he also just does breaks and all the utility stuff that Kaito does. You know, it's there. Um, Lilith is mainly here for like healing um, the, 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 the damage. Um, physical tank, if we need somebody to be a physical tank, we can like make her a provoker or something like that. Um, and then also she provides a reaper killer buff for the party one time. Um, she can just do some other utility and stuff too. LB fill with Bardarkja and you know whatnot. So we've got, we got some nice options here with, with, with Lilith. Um, and then Ibarra is just, you know, solidly good damage she's got the dark um the big dark amp for herself um she buffs all of her own killers that she needs with her base lb um she just you know she, she does lots of good things for us so lots of options for um for killers and for dark support we're obviously going with the dark team here so i'll probably will i mean if kaito doesn't work i'll just switch in ellis Ferris and it will be ex16 which is still enough for a rank one theoretically um but I'm, I mean, I'm curious to see Kaito's new buffs in action. Plus, he does that that awesome um, Reaper killer or Spirit killer buff for the party. So that's kind of where I'm leaning. Um, I have not geared these units yet, obviously. Um, and I don't have the and none of the espers are kind of set. But this is kind of where I'm planning on. I'm starting my my build here with this team. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully, that is useful information to you and will maybe help you kind of kind of get ready for. Um, gearing your own units for clash of wills and preparing your own team um you know arguably going for rank one is not maybe as necessary as it was before um depending on what this clash of wills looks like it might be easier to do it or harder to do it or who, who knows um but there you go um as far as you know what else to talk about um i i do i do want to just share a couple concerns um, one is that there, that this is Halloween and there is no Halloween content here. Like theoretically Clash of Wills is Halloween content, but like so far really the only Halloween content we're getting is this. Um, and while I think that Chow is like adorable and has a pumpkin and is dressed up for Halloween, um, I just don't get why this is the only Halloween content that we're getting. There's no like farm or raid or ex stages nothing with ghosts or skeletons or zombies or, or anything that we're that we're supposed to fight uh with this this unit other than clash of wills and so that's a little frustrating um this uh we now know that this card is here this card is basically looks like it's required for chow um so like if you pull a chow with a ticket it's basically like oh by the way you also need to get this this card for chow we'll talk about why you need this card for chow in just a second um, so I hope you're ready to shell out 28k for it, um, but it's a lot. I mean, it's it's a lot to invest in. Um, if you're if you just kind of wanted to pull Chow with tickets, you you kind of need this card, so you can't. Um, otherwise, I mean, it's 50k you know for a step up uh, if you get the card, um, which is pretty good actually. I mean, we we're, we're, I we were used to like 48k for a long time with cards. Um, and then it kind of jumped up to 54 and so 50 is a little better than what we've been getting, but still like, because they're kind of forcing you to get the card. Like, I feel like it's just, ugh, I don't like it. And, you know, as for like the, the, the units that are on the banner that are like the, the kind of curated pool, whether that's good or bad, it's, it's kind of up to like how often you pull, but like, honestly, Kaito's getting buffed. So having him here is good. Um, and then the other units, you know, Yuna could be useful for light teams or water teams um, in this current Clash of Worlds. So I could see it being good, you know. It's there. Um, here's Chow. He's a mage and support unit. His SLB, uh, Abracadabra Alakazam. It is a spirit break, water resistance in peril, staff and rod in peril, and morale based, morale based water magic damage to all enemies. I wish we knew what his regular limit burst was. I wish we knew if he had like killer buffs for the party. I wish we knew more about his kit, but we'll find out more in a couple days. 
Um, I do think this STMR is really good. I think the staff is decent, mainly for Chow. His leader skill is wacky. I get why it's there, but it's, it's wacky. And these are not new things. They, they showed us these in the live stream. But I just, I, I really do. I feel like, um, I feel like this card, right? 140 base magic with a 1500 magic bonus for Chow only, 500 for everybody else. It just, it basically just reads as like, you have to have this, you, this card or your Chow is going to be inferior. Um, and until they make a card that gives any random unit, you know, 1500 or more, like, this is going to be the card that goes on Chow. Like, and it's just, it, it, I'm not stinky that it's going to cost you 28k to get it because, like, you know, maybe you were hoping to throw tickets and, like, now you need to spend 28k. I guess 28k is better than spending 50k, but, you know, being saddled with it and just kind of being forced into it is, is, is kind of rough, in my opinion. I don't love that. His own card is interesting. It's cute. Um, I don't. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a card. Um, the, the true double hand is kind of cool on it. Uh, the bonus stats are kind of cool. Uh, I like that it's spirit and magic. It's good for units that maybe um, need that extra spirit um, who, who are mages, which is kind of nice, but in, in general, you know, it's whatever. And then um, obviously the upgrades to Carton and Kaito. Speaking of Carton, um, last year Carton was not in the pool when you were trying to summon for Chow. Um, I'm guessing that Carton is not in the pool for this one either, or some, when you were pulling for Lilith last year. I'm guessing Carton is not in the pool, um, which is a little sad. Um, but you can get Carton off of this, the Envy Guaranteed 10 plus 1, um, because um, only the Halloween units are in there. So if you happen to get any more than the Guaranteed, you could get a Carton off of this or a Lilith off of this or any Barra off of this. And then you're going to get a bunch of five stars that are Halloween themed. So hopefully you get the one you want. I personally already have EX3, Ibarra, and Lilith. So I'm really hoping for a carton who I don't have at all, just for collection purposes. Um, but um, we'll we'll see how that goes on Thursday. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're getting um, some updates to the UI and stuff like that that they talked about on the live stream. I'm not 100% sold on Chow yet. Um, I want to see the full kit, um, which we'll obviously see, you know, tomorrow night uh, when the game maintenance goes into maintenance and we kind of get that information. Hopefully he's useful and good. Um, hopefully he provides more than just damage. I would love to be able to add, you know, Chow to a spirit killer or a reaper killer category that we have on my new spreadsheet. So, um, yeah, that's what I got for right now. Where are the Halloween content? Where is my, where, where's the thing where I'm farming pumpkins and killing zombies, huh? Where's that event? You guys be good to each other. Take care. See you on Thursday. Um, thanks for sticking around. Thanks to everybody who helped me with the, the list of all the units and stuff that you can take the Clash of Wills. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'll be playing something live, whether we're doing the Crystal Tower or Clash of Wills. If we do any summons, it'll be on Thursday, probably. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. But uh, that'll be over on Twitch, and I will see you guys over there on Thursday. So until then, be good to each other, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.